Hello YouTube, I'm just doing a quick video to show you how I installed the OS on the budget Hackintosh. The first thing you want to go, you're want going to want to do is go to the Tony Mac 86 website which is just below in the description and follow step 1 and step 2. Um, you're going to download yours mate from the App Store and you're going to create a bootable drive using Unibeast so you can boot this on your PC. If you don't have another Mac to get a copy of yours mate, there are other options to get it which I'm not going to cover here. Um, a simple Google search should should show you, but essentially the only legal way to get it is to download it from another Mac. I actually downloaded it from the App Store on my MacBook. It is available on Torrent websites, but I'm not going to cover that here. So the next thing to do once you've created your bootable USB drive is put it into your machine and change the BIOS settings to boot from USB. I've already done this, but it's relatively straightforward. It will then boot from the USB drive to Clover, which allows you to boot Mac OS X on a PC and it's automatically installed by Unibeast. Once it boots into Clover, you're going to want to navigate to options using the arrow keys. And there's a couple of fixes relating to the USB devices. Um, USB is a bit temperamental with OS X on these HPs. So if you go to DSDT fix and go down to fix USB and select that just using the spacebar. And then you're going to want to go to PCI devices as well, and just tick the first three options. That's USB ownership, USB injection, and USB fix, I believe. Then you want to go on to your OS X install disk, hit the spacebar, and boot it up in verbose mode. This will show you any errors if you get them. Basically, it's a diagnostic mode for the boot up of OS X. Um, it should go smoothly, but if you do get an error, it will help you troubleshoot it because you'll be able to see what's actually going on. This does take a few minutes to boot up. Once it's finished booting, you'll be greeted by the OS X installer. Um, first thing that you're going to need to do is format the drive, which we'll do through Disk Utility in a moment. There is a right and wrong way to do this, so as long as you follow this, you should be fine. You can see now it's booting the graphical installer. If you get to this stage, it's going to boot 99% of the time. Okay, so as you can see, we're now at the graphical installer. So if you just click the little arrow at the bottom to continue, and then click Utilities and Disk Utility, we can get the format and the hard drive. First thing to do is if you click on Partitions, and then select 1 at the top. Then you want to go down to Options, and you want to make sure GUID Partition Tables selected. You can then name the drive whatever you want. You can leave it as entitled if you like, it doesn't really make a huge difference at this stage. It will then ask if you're sure you want to erase it, just continue on with that. And then once it's complete you can just close Disk Utility. And then you can click continue. And just agree to the terms, of some terms and conditions. You can then select the drive that you want to install Mac OS X on, click continue, and you'll then see it's installing OS X. I've actually cut this down quite a bit. It does realistically take around 15 minutes. So once, once this is complete, it'll ask to restart. Restart the machine, leaving your USB drive plugged in, and select a boot from the hard drive you've just installed this to, rather than the USB installer. Um, Clover will still be used to boot this up for the first install, and then we'll install it on the hard drive in the next step. Okay, so the system's now rebooting. And as you can see, it's booting from the USB drive again. You can see attempting to boot from USB device there. And it will boot back to Clover. Um, you'll see this time around that you should have a few more options. As well as having your install, USB install, you also have your hard drive. So we want to do the same USB fix we did the first time round. That the same, same top three on there. And then you can just hit enter. Don't be alarmed if it takes a little while to start up. The, the first boot can take up to five minutes or so, maybe even longer, depending on the speed of your computer. So 
So as you can see, this is carrying on with the boot, and it's now booting into the graphical part again. You will get a white screen here for the first boot, and then it's going to take us to this page. So again, select your country, and then just click continue at the bottom. And then select your keyboard layout. Okay, when it asks how you want to connect to the internet, select this computer does not connect to the internet because we haven't got any network drivers installed just yet. You don't want to transfer anything from another Mac just yet. Even if you did, don't do it at this point because it could still fail. And then just create a user account. Once you click continue here, it may take a few minutes. Make sure you don't send any diagnostic reports to Apple because in theory they could pick up that this is a Hackintosh. Although I highly doubt that they would. Personally, I don't really want to take a risk. And again, this will take another couple of minutes and then it will log you into your new created account. As you can see, it's logging in there. Okay, now you're logged into your account, you're going to want to get a tool called MultiBeast. This can be downloaded from Tony Mac x86 and put on a memory stick. You want to go on to Audio, Universal, and select the first option for Voodoo HDA. Then you want to go to Miscellaneous and select the first fake SMC. For the network, it's an Intel network card on these HPs, and you want to select the first uh, Intel 1000 card. And for USB, we apply both fixes. Um, this stops the issue with having to um, fix USB every time you boot at the Clover prompt. Bootloader-wise, you want to select Clover Legacy for this HP. And then you want to inject NVIDIA or ATI, depending on which graphics card you buy for the build. System definition can be left as iMac or changed to Mac Pro. Um, free ones usually a good idea. Okay, when selecting your system definition, it's always best to go for one around the same age as your computer that you have built. I personally suggest going for Mac Pro 3.1 for this build. Once that's complete, reboot your machine. It will boot off the hard drive without a need for a USB stick, and it should work just like a normal Mac. If this helped you, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.